Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. A couple of weeks ago I got an email from Dehancer saying that they liked my stuff and asked if I wanted to try out their plugin called Dehancer Pro. As a long-time Film Convert user, I was very intrigued to try it out and compare these two film emulation plugins. That's why I instantly wrote them back and asked for a demo. If you're not familiar with Dehancer Pro, it's a high-end film emulation plugin, available for Premiere Pro, After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro X, Photoshop, Lightroom and there's even an iPhone app. I'm using Premiere Pro, that's why I'm reviewing the Premiere version of it. It should be the same in all programs though. Quick disclaimer. Dehancer supplied me with a free one-month license to try it out. They didn't tell me what to say or not to say about their plugin. They get to see the video as soon as you do. Now I'm going to show you what Dehancer has to offer and how I grade my footage with it. So let's get started. So we are here inside Premiere Pro 2024. We're gonna start with my Bali examples. I have three clips here. These are all shot on my Lumix GH6 and using the VLOG profile, which gives you the most dynamic range possible in your image. Um, normally I would just use this clip and go inside the Lumetri and apply the VLOG to REC709 conversion LUT from Lumix. And you come with a pretty good grade right now, um, but we're not going to do this today. We're gonna delete the Lumetri here. I'm going to add the Dehancer Pro. I have the version 2.1, this should be the most recent one right now. And then we go to the uppermost setting and that's the input setting. We have Rex 9 which this footage is not shot on. And then we can go here, drop down and choose your camera. See, you have plenty cameras right here. I'm using the Panasonic GH6. It's not shown up here. We have the GH5, the GH5S, which both use the VLOG L profile but we are using VLOG and that's pretty similar to the S5 Mark II which is here listed as VLOG L but that's a bug or some misinformation on Dehancer's side. So we're going to use the S5 Mark II VLOG L profile. Right now we're seeing a pretty similar look to the VLOG conversion LUT we are just applied uh, seconds before. This also already has some grain added and some film and some print settings. So what we're going to do now is we go into the film and there you can see we have plenty of options to choose our film from. We have some Afka, we have some Fuji Chrome, we have Kodak and some different uh, like the Cine still and we can just with our mouse, we can switch through all of them and check what, what the basic look would look like. I'm always liking the look of the Ultra Max because it's giving me a, some warm color grade and that's why we're choosing this one. What we can do now is we have our print and the print section, you can imagine it like you're filming something on your film camera and you want to print it on your photo paper. And what you're going to do is you choose different photo paper types and depending on your photo paper, it will look different. That's what we are going to do with the profile. As you see, we have a linear here and if we go to Fuji, you see how the contrast and the intensity of the color changes based on what profile we are choosing. So we can go through here and I think I like the Kodak print film here best. We have still nice colors, we have still nice whites and nothing overblown. We, we see here we are still in range, nothing blown out. If we would blow out something, we can go back to the film compression. And if we tick this checkbox, so all settings here, nearly all settings are by default deactivated. So if we want to use them, you have to activate them first like the film compression. What film compression does is brings back a bit of your highlights. So if we would, for example, we apply the settings here and we see that we are clipping, we could bring back some highlights with this film compression settings. So if we enable that, you can see the highlights in the shirt and the sky will come back. You can also see it on the scopes. But we are not going to do this because we're not clipping here. So we 
close these two out. What you can do on the print side is we can change the target white, we can make it more bluish or more warm. You can change the exposure, but the exposure is pretty okay. And the contrast, fine with that. And the color density. It's, it's similar to the vibrant setting on some saturation settings. So it's not the saturation because the saturation just cancels all color overall. The color density just changes the vibrance of the colors. We're gonna leave that. Maybe crank it up a little bit. Then we have analog range limiter. This just decreases the contrast and gives better more the digital look. We would like to say that. But I want to close this out because I like the look like this. Then we have, up here we have film developer. We can, for example, enable this and we can increase the contrast here, which is not as hard as with the print. And also the gamma correction. Gonna leave this. And we gonna disable it for this grade. Now we have expand, you can increase or decrease the black point and white point. See that, just like that, gonna leave this out. Then we have color head. Um, color head is similar to your three color wheels. So we have shadow, midtones, and highlights, and you can adjust it here. What I would like in a future update of Dehancer is maybe display it really like a color wheel and not only like sliders, because if we drop down here, we can only see sliders makes it a bit more hard uh, to adjust. But if you go in here and enable it, you can see we can shift these settings here. We can make it more reddish or just like that, but we're gonna remove these. And same here with the shadows, the midtones, and with the highlights. And every setting in Dehancer Pro has an impact setting. So where you can decrease the overall impact of this setting section. So, but we're gonna disable this too because we want to have a natural look and we don't want to fake it a bit. Now we are going to my three favorite sections. That's film grain, halation and blue. Film grain is, as you see, uh, the overall grain here. And you can choose based on your film size and also on your ISO but you can also go into here and make it completely custom. You can increase the size like hell and increase the amount and make it all grainy like that. But I'm just going here with my 35 millimeter ISO 500. It's a beautiful, nice, tight grain. Then we're going to halation. Um, I made a reel about halation. It's basically around all your highlights, a small red line, a blurry red line, um, which you can see here if we enable it. Maybe you go with the Super 8 Ramjet. You can see all the highlights get this slightly reddish tone and bloom around it. It's only the highlights. Like with the film grain, you can also go into custom and completely play with the setting. You can make it completely dreamy, but in this case, we're going with the 65 millimeter. I just want to have a slightly one, but not extreme. And now we're coming to my favorite setting, which is bloom. Traditionally, you would use something like a promise filter, um, but this setting makes it more or less not needed anymore. It won't fully replace your promised filter, but you can most of the time get the same result with this setting like you're doing with the promised filter. And the nice one is that you can increase or decrease it to your liking instead of having a fixed one eighth or one fourth um, promised filter on your lens. So if we enable it, we're going to Super 8, I'm getting bigger change here, but you can also see it in the mask mode. If you go to custom, you can start to increase or decrease the setting how we want it. Like that, and maybe amplify it and also increase the highlights maybe. And there's always the mask mode which shows you where you're applying the effect. But I'm going to use it here with Super 35. 
that's the perfect middle ground for me. That's not too much, but also not too less. So now we're coming to the fun section, which is just let me close these up, which is film damage and film breadth. Film damage just applies some damage to your video. You can also, as, as always, go into the custom settings and increase the dust amount, increase your hairs, increase your scratches and, scre and the total amount like that. You can completely go crazy with it. Um, we're gonna let this out because I'm not a huge fan of using it all the time. Uh, just sometimes maybe disable it for now. Also film breath and film breath is something interesting. Um, you don't see it here, but if we go to Super 8, for example, what this does is just add some slight color shift, like different exposure levels, different temperatures to your video. And the last setting, the last few settings you have is gate weave. Gate weave is, you see it's just zoomed in a little bit. That means we add some slight shake in here. So it might be the <laughs> worst video you can choose for this setting. But what it does is just like if you're running a film camera, the film will not only always stay in the same position, it just moves around a little bit. And that's what Gate Weave does. So if you if you choose Super 8, um, you see a lot, lot more of the shake coming in. Um, and as always, you have so much different settings to increase it if you want. The last one is monitor. That's no effect or something like that. What I like about it is the additional false color, where you can see your IRE score and where you can also see if you're clipping or not. In this case, we're not clipping. Um, looks good. We have some crushed blacks, but crushed blacks are, aren't as bad as crushed highlights. So that's nice for your grade. And the last one is your total impact which reduces all effects. So, which is kind of sad because if, you, if you're you happy with the grade, but it's a bit too much, um, you want to decrease the total, the total impact, um, but this also de decreases your halation and your bloom. And your bloom will look pretty decent <laughs> if it's at 50% opacity. Because you can imagine it like you're using an adjustment layer and adding the effect and decreasing the opacity of your adjustment layer. It's more or less the same. Let this at 100%. So I'm pretty happy with what we have here. And the thing is, it plays back very well. Hit play. No restuttering. We are one at one fourth of a resolution. If we go full resolution, it always obviously will we start a little bit. My machine isn't the, the best machine. So I have only an i7, I think uh, 32 gig RAMs and uh, a 1070 GeForce NVIDIA GPU. Um, I will list all the settings on the, on the side. So all in all, I don't have the best PC out there, but the Hanser runs without any issues if I go in one four quality. And um, my still frame is set to full. And this is a 4K 10-bit clip. I have no issues at all. What we can do now is we can go in here and copy the dehancer setting and for example, go to this clip and we can apply it here. And what we have now is we have instantly a nice clip. Maybe what we can do is we can adjust the exposure and decrease the temperature a little bit because it was pretty warm here. And then we have a nice clip, pretty heavy with that. Looks good. Quick comparison to the Convert Nitrate. So as you can see, we have the halation add-on here, which adds halation too. So we can see it here. Um, what I like and also don't really like is we have a quick setting here for film chroma which adds the color of the film and film luma which adds the lightness of the film or the contrast. But that's all. That's all you can do with your film settings. You have some film size settings which affect the grain. 
if we deactivate the grain for a second and you can add the vibrance back but that's all you have some basic correction and you have the film selection which is kind of dull and presettings to manipulate the film um, yeah you have some settings down here with the color correction you have the wheels and you can adjust these and something but there's something we have in lumetri so that's nothing we need in a separate plugin so if you compare these two it's a quick create yeah that's one it's a bit more greenish and that's one is a bit more brown I think the hands offers much more in comparison to Film Convert, but it also costs nearly double what Film Convert costs. So keep that in mind. So Dehenser Pro's lifetime license for the full package is 449 US dollars, which is more on the expensive side, I think, for a plugin. But if you really love film emulation and are into the vibe and looks of it, I think it's definitely worth the investment, but that's my opinion. Um, if you want to try it out yourself, there's a free trial you can download on Dehancer.com. And if you want to buy it, I hook you up with that 10% discount using the code in my description. Thanks for watching and see you next time.